You've worked with a diverse group of people. Yeah. Diverse group of kids. Yeah, my first job was at, at an orphanage okay. for children. Yeah. What does each group need that the other doesn't? So you're working with kids from an orphanage versus kids that maybe um, came, grew up in a middle class home, mm -hmm. expected to go to college, maybe they didn't. What does each group need when you teach them about filmmaking? Well, I, that when I was a, a, in the orphanage teaching, I wasn't doing filmmaking. I, I was just a special ed teacher. I didn't do filmmaking until later. So when I taught, the way I taught was very, very different. I, I taught performance. It was almost like performance art. My theory was that if, if kids can watch TV for five hours and not get bored, if I could make my lesson plan that interesting, you know, I would get to them. But it's a lot of work, you know, because you got to script every night and do the whole thing. But I got their attention and it, and it was working. My problem when I was an early teacher, I was putting all my money back into the kids. I would have gone broke. So I stopped teaching after a couple of years and did what everybody does when they stop teaching, go into show business. Well, I think you, your father wanted you to get a degree, and so... Yeah, my dad wanted me to... I promised my dad I would get a degree, and the, te and the jobs that were open were special ed, and I was always, you know, kind of the protector of special needs kids, so it, it made sense, you know, to go into that, you know. Um, but now dealing with the group that we... It, it's really... Um, what was the question again? So... When you work from kids, when you work with kids from different backgrounds, mm -hmm. so let's say you're working with kids that were in an orphanage, whether you're teaching them filmmaking or not, mm -hmm. versus kids that maybe had a more quote unquote middle class upbringing, two parents who wanted them to go to college, whatever. What are their needs in the class? Well, I think it's it's what everybody needs that you want them to buy into what you're doing. You know, when you feel like you're a part of something. Because you don't ever know what, what you know. The filmmaking stuff, it's a tough business. It's not an easy business. But that's why I say with uh, the special needs kids that we do, they get so much more out of it because of the involvement and being part of a group. So you want to make sure that they feel part of it. And then, you know, where they go from that, whether it's going to be editing or camera or whatever, that's, gonna be, that's their journey. But I think the most important thing is making them feel like they're a part of the team. You did a documentary, or you were part of a young man's documentary, uh, Normal People yeah. Scare Me? Yeah. Yeah, I, I know that. I, I can identify with that uh, title. Okay. <laughs> um, when you sat the children down, or some were teenagers, I believe, and you did the interviews with them, what was important for you in that moment? Well, uh, the, 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 so let me back up on that. How that got started was, my daughter, I was running a thing called Entertainment Experience where we were teaching neurotypical children. And my daughter, Rachel, started a film festival at Chaminade High School and said, Daddy, can you help me out? I said, what do you need? And she says, well, I've never done a film festival before. I said, all right. I said, I'll give you things, give you things to give away, uh, like you know, classes or camps or whatever, so you have prizes, and then I'll get you some PR. And I did this article in this newspaper called The Acorn. And in the article, I, it mentioned that I was a former special ed teacher and also talked about this concept of a practical film workshop. So two parents with children with, uh, uh, on the spectrum came to me and asked if I would open the doors to special needs kids. I said, absolutely. You know, I said, I have the teachers here, I have the space. And the other one said, well, my son would like to submit a film. I said, okay, what's the film about? Uh, it's about uh, what it's like to be autistic from an autistic kid's point of view. I said, that's cool. I said, send me the film. So he didn't know how to make a film. So I said, well, let me meet him. And I met him, and after meeting him, I said, all right, I'm going to give you a cameraman and an editor, and I'll mentor you through this process. And that started, it was like a 10 minute documentary. And uh, I got, uh, I pitched it to the Daily News and they did a big story about it. And then ABC News came down and uh, uh, PBS did a documentary 
about the making of this little film festival that we're expecting 50 people, 500 showed up. People from, from uh, Ireland and Italy came and they wanted to know about this kid. But I said, you have to do the work. I'll provide the cameraman and the editor. You have to do the interviews. You have to do all the questions. And that's what happened. And then I mentored him. And then later we did a feature length documentary uh, later. But, you know, it was important that he did the work. And when you did the feature length documentary or even with the short, were you there during any of the interviews? Yeah, I was there through most everything. Except there was a couple on location I wasn't at. Oh, okay. And I sent my camera guy to do it, so. And how did you make the people feel relaxed? How did I make them feel relaxed? Oh, God. I, 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 I don't, I, I just, I just do it. I just go. I mean, when we do these camps, I have 50 kids on the spectrum that don't know each other. And I come in, quiet on the set. This is what we're going to do. The train's leaving the uh, station. Jump on board. Nobody questions it. They just, you know, it's like when I think about what we do in less than 50 hours with 50 kids that don't know each other and get on board, they buy into it right away. And all the times that we've done camps, and I'm doing them 13 years now, so thousands of kids, we've only had to ask uh, two to leave because everybody bought into it. And it, it's really something to see that whole process. That's like really cool. Sorry, neurotypical? Neurotypical, like, like Tina, she's neurotypical. No, well, you know, they say normal, but what is normal? Don't yeah. know. Yeah, neurodiverse now is the new uh, uh, phrase now for people with disabilities, neurodiverse. And and does that mean on the spectrum? Do they no longer well, use Well, neurodiverse that means they could be, you know, it could be autism, it could be Down syndrome, it could be whatever, they're different. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah. I don't know, everybody's the same to me, so. What makes the Travoltas such great storytellers? <sighs> the Travoltas such a story, I don't know. I don't well, we've been in it and around it, I mean, they, I, I, uh, I don't know, I just always like telling stories. From a very young age, I like telling stories. Um, I, it's the listening and watching. I observe, all my siblings are like that. But I like to observe people. I'll go, you know, walk around the mall just to look at people. And always, I always wonder where they came from, what do they do, you know, what would what is it like at their house at Christmas time? What is it, you know? What's a birthday party like? And you know, what do these people do? It's I like I like people. I re I love people, and I think that's a, a big part of it. And uh, uh, I'm very comfortable going into a room of perfect strangers and taking the room over. You know, I, if I had to, not that I want want to do that. But I'm just saying I'm comfortable like that. My sister Ellen's like that. We enjoy mingling and meeting people and doing that. Um, and we're very comfortable with that, my sister Ellen and myself. Do you collect people? Uh, yeah, I have two in my trunk right oh, now. Oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> you want to yeah. collect people. No, not like that. But, you know, no. there's some people they do. They collect people. They have them as an extension of their own family. Yeah, it's they all work for me. <laughs> Okay. I have the same staff for like 10 years now, 12 years. And that's, that's a sign of, you know, when you have the same people working for you, they, either they like you or, you know, I mean, we, it's, we have a lot of fun at what we do. You know, if, if I didn't have fun with what I'm doing, I wouldn't do it. And by me having fun doing it, we make it fun for everybody else. But collecting people, well, no, I don't collect people. I like people. 